Hey, Art, how's it going, man? Uh, fuck, I had enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up? Oh, fuck this. Ah, oh, fuck this shit, bro. It's like, uh, how many days is it? 56? Uh, I lost count to day one. Uh, well, good for you, because that's the longest one day of your life. <laughs> the longest 50 something days of my life. <laughs> fuck it all. <laughs> <laughs> That should be, that should be the that. best fucking start to a chat that I've had yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, fuck my life. Other than that, I was, I was... <laughs> okay, wait, okay, okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, so this is Art Pereira, and Art is, um, well, the fuck up. <laughs> Art is a fuck up. There you go. It comes direct from yeah. the horse's fucking mouth. It can't be that wrong, can it? Uh, Kevin can also agree to that as well. Yeah, he called Kevin you uh, dickhead, was it? Oh, that's nice. That's, that's, that's nicer than what he normally calls me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I love the guy. He's cool. <laughs> Funny you said the same thing. Yeah, he has to. You know, otherwise, I'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a brighter side then. No, that's great. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, right. There's, uh, just been grafting, working hard. Um, you know, I'm like one of the lucky ones. It still has a work, it still has a job to do, mm-hmm. but it's like, you know, pay cut and increase in work to try and keep company afloat kind of thing, you know? And, what is, uh, it, what is it that you do on the, on the side? Well, not on the side, but what do you do as a, as a job then? So, uh, I work in a marketing department for a company that sells continuous improvement processes for industries such as chemicals and you lost product, me at and, marketing. Uh, food and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm I mean I'm in marketing, so I'm like the person that everyone hates the most. Yeah. Fuck your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, dude. I mean, like at least. I mean, at least I've got a job um, and the clients aren't exactly people that I know. So it's all like CEOs and people that are running factory floors and a whole bunch of staff and are running uh, continuous improvement projects in their own factory floors. Those are the people that we annoy, so it's okay. <laughs> they get paid to be annoyed. We, we've got to annoy the CEOs. Uh, we, that's just part of the job, right? There's nothing that can annoy a CEO because they're always playing fucking golf or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love well, to get. Someone got for them, and it's like, uh, yeah, uh, can you shift all my meetings for like next week when I give a shit? That's a CEO. <laughs> what does CEO stand for? Don't, 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 don't. No, uh, no, that's, the, that's the one word that I've said is not allowed on this program. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Chief Executive Orifice. <laughs> Chief fingering of or- orifice. Yeah, that's fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you and love your job. Bunch of chunks. It? Yeah, it's the best. How can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. You know, the, the job is as good as as uh, you make it out to be. It's as good as you make it. It's as good as as the people you work with. And uh, if you really do have an issue with it, then leave. Exactly. If it like if you really hate your job, it's not really your job. It's you that you don't fit in the job. So. Yeah, like you say, you've got a job, so fucking all. Yeah, I mean, I am one of the lucky ones, but yeah. uh, it, I am I am working my tiny little balls off, but that's all right. <laughs> that's a discussion. That's another discussion. That's that's another <laughs> chat altogether. Oh, tiny balls. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a whole new channel that's needed for that discussion. Okay. And on tonight's channel, a misprint that says oh, yeah. tiny balls. Yeah, nothing new. <laughs> nothing new with those tiny balls. They're still tiny. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a start to a conversation. Brilliant. So, oh, tell me, yeah. I haven't seen you in mm. fucking ages, years even. I can't even remember the last time I saw you. Can you remember? Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, the last time that I saw you. Um, I think it was actually, I think it was, it must have been a throat ball show. Wasn't one of the it? last throat ball shows that they played. I think it was oh, a replicated gig. Was, it could be. I remember it being at Mercury, and I remember Jonathan Comerford uh, coming back from a staff uh, party at the end of the year or something, and he was like stuffed on um, on a um, what's that that green liquid stuff? Uh, shit, what's the, <laughs> the, the fairy uh, shit? Anyways, yeah, the fairy stuff. He had tons of that, and then he kept smacking the mic stand into his <laughs> face. 
Yes. <laughs> I think, I think it was. I think it was that night. But okay, so that, that's. I think that's. A, I think that's a throat ball. I know replicated. Did, yeah, did, that was did a throat play ball. at um, Mercury, but I, I think that might have been a throat ball thing. Were you not at the at that place that was across the street from Pirates when replicated played the one time? Yes, and and you and I said, I why is it, you still said to me because we had an argument before about history. <laughs> we were talking about yes, that <laughs> was Pearl fucking Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Jeez. that was it. That was it. The place in the yes. place in Scumstead, whatever that, yeah, Scumstead. whatever that venue was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a shithole. Yeah. yeah, but that, that was a that was a cock long time ago, dude. That yeah, was it's many been, years ago. It's been yeah. yeah, but you you kind of went off the scene. That, I went off the scene. Yeah, I did because um, my ears were getting pretty fucked up. I was also like in too many projects. I was getting like stressed. The money was like, why bother spending my money on playing to the same kids every day? Right. And I mean kids. I mean like you you get older, but the kids stay the same age, mm -hmm. and they just get less in less in the body count. So I'm like, why why do this? Like I'm I'm hurting my ears. I'm like stressing because of work and the money and I'm playing all this shit. So I was like, you know what? I need I need to get a break away before I actually burn my drum kit and never touch it again. Yeah. So I just like I just dumped it and then like uh, I kind of played I played after that but it was more like if I really wanted to and if it was like you know if it was something that was okay. But so, it wasn't like you know, So why now? Why why sort of um, be interested in doing the whole lithium thing? It's not so much like interest the, the thing is just something this is something really cool to work towards to put in in a like almost a bookend or a feather in the cap or you know just yeah. like a little a check a box to check that you never had there before yeah. um because like if i mean if, if i was to start up a new band again i would be like no i don't really feel like it. I'd rather have it as a as a project that you do at home and just release demos like barney simon style and yeah then, um, yeah just continue with that but um yeah you know, when and also because i was uh, almost involved with the deadbeats with your butt yeah and um and it was from that from that way dave actually said for me to try uh, or to jam with lithium but um since that discussion things have went tits up and we haven't really done much uh, all i've just been doing is i've been learning the set list that i was given to learn right um because we were going to be playing with uh we were going to be playing next month with the uh, the narrow, but that's now. I'm sure that's cancelled. Wow. Okay. And I think I think that was going to be at uh, Mercury as well, and Mercury's and, dead. Yeah, so. Mercury is fucking dead. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So, but but it's I, I, like what Kevin and Paul said in in the other episodes. It's like we still have to play together. We haven't got to, the, to that point. Yeah. But I've have been learning and stuff like that and it's, it's just been really cool to it's been really cool to uh work on esop because that's like that's mm. like the pinnacle i think of lithium songwriting especially that end day where simon goes ballistic yeah I'm just trying to figure out how that works and then um i've kind of i've built it up from little pieces of the track and i sent it to kevin to see if if it's right and he says yeah that's cool and i sent it to dave and he's like yeah that works now we won't be out of time and <laughs> but at, at least now i know <laughs> Uh, fucking bassists and drummers. Yeah. What is with you guys? Uh, I don't know. But it, it, it's, been, it's been really cool to work, especially on, on getting uh, Aesop down. Now I have it down, and I'm able to actually play around with it and, and still know where I am, which is... Basically, a make it better. Song. Well, I don't... I mean, make it better, that's always a subjective thing. Um, I, I just... I mean, I was looking at... I mean, I was like playing like older tracks now, like like Bite It yeah. and Obituary and like the older stuff. And I think with without changing the structure in something which is what I would normally do. It's like I'm I'm looking at a different way to approach playing the drums just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit more of a fresh boost to give the song a little bit of life in the modern day. Because back in the day like those grooves were very big with, with Alice in Chains and, and yeah. system of a or system of a down fucking sound god and, and like, you know, those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, but like nowadays, it feels kind of like um, it's kind of like the default button when you open up a drum program and you just press something and it does that. It, mm -hmm. it sounds like it's quite done. So now I'm like, 
okay, how can I give it a little bit more life? And the last couple of shows that I saw let him play with Simon, he was trying to do that because, you know, Simon, he always wants to push it and make yeah. it a bit more faster and punkier. Yeah. But like, he was, he was, he was pushing in some parts. I was like, okay, there's an idea that I can latch on because he wasn't taking it past there because he was still respecting the older stuff. But like, yeah. I, I think I, in some case, in some points in the songs, I do want to just bring forward my ideas to with especially with just the rhythm just to give it new life but not to necessarily change change it change completely yeah yeah to, still no, still honor it you don't want to do that yeah honor the roots yeah yeah exactly but um it, it'd be really cool to do that when we are able to do that you know so it's just it's just kind of a sucky situation uh, i don't i don't think anything's going to happen on for bands to play until the end of the year i reckon i reckon it's going to be till way later than that yo you reckon uh, 2021 maybe may, maybe if um maybe oh shit i don't know dude i mean the only way things are going to happen is if a vaccine gets discovered <laughs> yeah. uh, and otherwise or have otherwise, they haven't they you know fucking all well i you know just test on a prison and see what happens you know, <laughs> people die so much uh, for, you know, I actually they're all listening <laughs> People that are listening, this is art. I'll <laughs> give it to you fucking straight and true. That's that's one thing you guarantee. There's no book that there's no fluffing around the fucking edges here. This is straight and narrow as it fucking gets. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm like almost on par replacement for Simon. <laughs> You're just a lot more polite. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, like dude, I, I, I don't know the full extent of behind everything or why everything is the way it is now with the band, and it's none of my business really. But I still, I still rate Simon. He's, he's one of the guys that actually got me to play it like a drum kit, yeah. full stop. Like to actually sit behind a friend of mine's kit. He's like, he's, he's the guy for, for sure. And I did steal a lot of his, <laughs> his chops and. And I work, and I, you know, I've taken a lot from the guy, and he knows that. And I keep telling him, he keeps telling me that, like, he respects me and the, the the playing style as well. But it's like I don't know what the big deal is, but I will still look at him as a peer and as a, as a, what do you call it, like someone to look up to when yeah. he's playing yeah. because. Because like, because the reason why I said it'd be a nice like feather in the cap or a box to check that you didn't know you had that you kind of have to do it was like fuck, dude. When when I was a kid, like in high school, going to watch a lithium show was like, like going to see Metallica. I mean, you didn't. I mean, you got to see it from the sideline mm. because you were like part well, of that lucky. crew. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't get to see it from like the kids' point of view in the crowd. It was like holy shit. There's this local band that's playing and they can play well and they can rock on and they don't sound cheesy and they're actually mm. like on par and you on par with like the big stuff that you put posters up on your wall for and it's like they are local dudes and they're kicking ass and it's like holy shit there's an actual band in my country or in my town that can actually play like these guys and it's it's it, it's life changing. I mean, you you didn't you didn't get to experience that, but I did. Yeah. So like when when seeing and eventually making mates with all the guys in the band, which is one awesome thing. But now it's like asking to replace one of the dudes you looked up to in a band. Even it doesn't even matter what how or, or what level they are at in their career and what stage or whatever. That shit doesn't matter. It's like if you get offered that, you fucking take it. You know, yeah. it's 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 not really like I'm gonna make it big now. It's like like, fuck, I'm, I'm doing stuff that they make movies about. You know, like that movie that with uh, uh, Mark and Mark? Oh, yes, that, yeah. Uh, he yeah, was yeah. a, a voc vocalist for a band that he was a fan of. Yeah, it's that Zach, kind of shit. Zach yeah. Wilde was the guitarist in the band. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And Jason Bonham was the drummer. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of Jason Bonham. Really? Yes. Aren't you? Don't you like the song? No. I'd say, no. Dude, uh, Jason Jason Bonham, he, he, as much as he tries, he's not going to be his dad. No, no one can. No. And In fact, yeah. Anyone, as much as anybody tries, they're not going to be his dad. <laughs> There's no. no fucking way. <laughs> so, like, he's, he, I mean, he's holding up the torch, you know, trying to, like, you know, make people remember him. But the thing is, like, we don't need Jason Bonham to remember John Bonham. Nobody does. Nobody needs to remind us. He's like, he's like fucking drum god, you know. It's like <laughs> when, when, it, when God wants to listen to a drummer, you'll speak to, like, John Bonham. You go, like, hey, dude, come play, play me some tasty beats today. Show me that rabbit foot of yours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's the guy. We don't need Jason Bonham. He must play his own setup. He mustn't emulate his dad. Do his own thing, man. Fucking off. Have you um, watched <laughs> the? the, the... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! The art is on form tonight. Jeez. <laughs> Damn! Don't yeah. hold back, man. Just keep going. I don't know. I don't know. 
So you were on Facebook for quite a while and then you just fucking disappeared. Was that part of like just taking a break? Yes. Actually, no. Yes and no. I'll, <laughs> I'll say maybe. <laughs> Straight down the middle as always. No, because like, I mean, I had, a, I had a chat with Carolyn yesterday about Facebook and it, it my skin starts turning purple when I talk about that fucking site. <laughs> it's it, the, it's like the the amount of fucks that I need to give mm. I cannot count on one hair to actually mm. go on Facebook. It's it's like I don't really care about your sandwich or like <laughs> your political thoughts or that you haven't had a cigarette in five months. I don't give a shit. Either give me something that I can actually benefit my life from or get the fuck out, you know? And it's like yeah. most of the time Facebook is just babies and old people and <laughs> and memes. <laughs> Babies and old people. That's classic. And memes and yeah. memes and stolen YouTube videos and just people peddling other shits and copying people's tweets and using it as a Facebook status and getting likes. Ah, social media, dude. I hate it. I hate. I mean, like, I I got rid of my Twitter. I got rid of my Instagram. I got rid of my Facebook. I only keep YouTube because I get entertainment out of YouTube from because uh, I, I I seem to. Uh, how I say it, I, I kind of rate myself as uh, like a advanced YouTube user. As mm -hmm. in like, um, I, I've got some channels that I follow that even Carolyn is surprised by. It's like, I had no idea this stuff is on YouTube. And it's like, well, you know, you, you find it if you look for it. Yeah. It's like really good, con there's really good content creators and none of them are, are like cheesy shit where they start off it's like, hey, hey, hey guys, what's happening here? Here's Art coming at you with another video. Fuck them. <laughs> So why, why decide to do this then or agree to, to have a chat then? Yeah, chats are cool. I like chats. I like talking to people, especially people that I know. And yeah. if and, and it's like uh, if it gives you one extra video to push up your uh, video count to get extra views, then sweet. I'm, I'm not actually doing it for that. I'm just doing it because I'm fucking bored and I've got time on my yeah. hands to do it. And I'm not doing it to make yeah. money. There's no fucking mu millions of people have to tune in for you to start making like $10. No, fuck that. Whatever. Check this, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, the last time I started playing music for money was when uh, I had my gear stolen and then I had a fundraising event which I had to put in 500 grand to cover venue fee. <laughs> oh, so that's when I was like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not going to make any money. I'm trying to make money to get back my shit and then I still have to pay in, it's a fucking scam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened to the kit? How did, uh, it, get, how did it get nicked? Uh, it was when we were doing... Um, the VOL's demo it was before our CD, right. before our album. I hate that it was an album because it makes it sound like it's more important than it is. <laughs> uh, we were doing our, our like uh, glorified demo demo recording. Okay. And then when we were doing that, we went to uh, Paul Dutoy, I think his name is. We went to his house in Constantia just to listen to the final mixes of the demo stuff. Right. And then when we left, like uh, Kevin's car's window was broken in. He's like, oh shit, they stole my beer. And then I, I'm like, oh, that sucks. And I look at my car and then they broke in and they took all my drum gear out of the boot. And it was like, oh. just gone. Yeah, I wow. had uh, all my cymbals, my pedal, the cymbal case, which I just brought from back from London. This was about oh. 2004 or five. It was 90 euros for 90 pounds for this oh. symbol case that I bought. Fucking awesome. That was gone. All my symbols were gone and my double pedal was gone. And yeah, so I was like, shit, I need some new stuff. So let's have a fundraiser and I ended up paying in to cover the venue fee. <laughs> Yeah, but that was that was. I, I had a sneaky suspicion this conversation would be quite fucking funny, sad, <laughs> funny, <laughs> ah, <laughs> funnily yeah. sad, fucking hell. But what can you do, right? I mean, it sucks, but no, no, yeah. yeah, you you can't do anything. I mean, everyone that I know has had had gear stolen, like everyone. So it's it's not like nothing new, and it's it's just like well, if you leave your stuff in the car, it's it's gonna get it's gonna get swiped, you know. So yeah. it's you just when when you finish playing a show, you leave your stuff on stage, and then when they say, "Okay, we're gonna close up the venue," you go, "Cool, guys, I'm going home now." You yeah. can't just put the stuff in the car and go and have a couple of extra drinks or something. Yeah, it's like when you put the stuff in the car, that's it. You home fuck time. off. Yeah, don't leave, it. leave nothing in the car ever, 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 ever. And so, that's so, and those are the only stories that happen. So what was the last thing you played in live? Um, <laughs> it was Ramfest that just happened like like a couple of months ago. Okay, was that it when was, you? Was that when you did the Metallica Master of Puppets the video that's yeah, on YouTube? Yes. 
Yes. Okay, cool. Well, we'll play that now. People can see that on the screen now as we're talking. It'll be in the background. So I've got that. Yeah. I've got that lined up. So that's great. Yo, dude, you're you're a kick-ass fucking drummer, man. Well, if you're using that video as your as your guide, then I would have to strongly disagree because because <laughs> that night I was cramping in my arms like something fierce, and I wasn't feeling that rad. I was like I wasn't like I was pacing up and down. I remember like pacing up and down backstage because with that Metallica tribute it was two drummers, and I was playing the second half of the set. Right. So like they already started to play and I was like, you know what, I'm a cover band playing on a main stage, playing covers at Ramfest. This is like so wrong. You know, mm. so I was like this I was like uncomfortable with the whole feeling about it and I was just like pacing up and down and I was just like trying to focus but then I was over focusing and then like when I got up into the stage I was like shit now I've lost my internal metronome. I don't know where fucking thing is i'm playing the other guy's set up so like the symbols in weird places so like the whole time i'm fighting the kit for me to play well then, yeah well if in that case i think yeah yeah fuck it yeah well it was pretty good you know fuck it <laughs> <laughs> i strongly <laughs> disagree but i was pretty fucking good fuck it yeah i mean like i mean i think about it that way i was like playing a kit i'm not familiar with i'm playing to, to yeah that's that's that that's like, pretty good fucking about. game yeah yeah i mean like but obviously, I would, would have loved to have had like a, a couple of more practices, but we only really had uh, three over um, two months, three practices over two months before that show. What's the best band you've played in? Best band I've played in. Mm. Or best project or best whatever little stunt that you had. Oh, shit. Uh, fuck. Well, that wasn't the band, but I might as well call one that. Um, there was, there was a... It wasn't really the best thing, but the most fun was this uh, one gig. This band that lived for only one gig was a thrash band called Shitstorm. <laughs> it, that was a lot of fun. How appropriate you guys would have been right now. Yeah, it, it, we would have been rad. I mean, and uh, that was that was the one band that they listened to my ideas. Like we started off a song with the guitar solo just so that we could get to the heavy bits. You know, so like the song started... <laughs> With the guitar solo, I'm like, that's rad. Let's do that. And it worked. It was fucking rad. So why only one and gig? Like, yeah, we wanted to do more, but the vocalist, um, uh, Rail Futureman, he's a, he's a, a, a lecturer and, and a <clears throat> teacher at Cape Tech University for design. Okay. So his time, his, his availability was always a bit uh, limited. And I was also had four other bands at the time and... You know, the, the bass player, Oli, he was going to move to Namibia and just was kind of like starting the right idea at the wrong time. Kind of shit thing, storm you know? by name, shit storm by nature. Yeah, we even made t-shirts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one fucking hell, you kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. I don't have one. So it's cool. <laughs> Hey, come on, that's I just not right, man. Well, it, 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 it's kind of cool that I don't have one because I basically cribbed a design from the Nazis. So, <laughs> but it was, it wasn't the swastika. It was the eagle. I, I took the eagle and I just yeah. changed the head a bit and I just changed a few little details. So it wasn't the eagle. I just put like shitstorm above it. And it was pretty rad logo. Were but, the um, S's in the Nazi S? No, 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 no. no I, was, <laughs> that's I wasn't too, I was, too fucking obvious. Yeah, I wasn't that on the nose. But, uh, <laughs> Um, I suppose one of the better bands or the cooler bands was also the most challenging was Verona Walls. I was in that band for quite a, for a good couple of years. They started in 2008 and then I joined them in 2013 or 14 or some shit. But they were rad. They were like a um, little bit progressive. They had um, little bits of, little taste of hardcore in there, like Protest the Hero vibes as well. Um, they had a bit of of uh shit. bands like that like Coed and cambria was also a big influence of those guys okay so like but it, it the way everyone brought their stuff in was it sort of gave it like its own little flavor and everyone was really like alive on stage like jumping around and you know so it was it wasn't one of those bands where like they just stand in the mm. corner and you know try and have their hair as long as possible so they actually try and look cool but these guys are actually just like jumping around wearing colorful shorts and stuff because who gives a fuck it was right yeah. I mean, it's a cool, it was a cool band. I mean, uh, we just really didn't, in my time at the band, we made like one demo recording and we didn't really do anything else. But uh, yeah, that was the coolest. But uh, I, I still have to put, well, I was going to say VOL is still the top one, but the worst one. 
objectively speaking. Yeah. This is not opinion. This yeah, is like yeah. from what people have told me. So I will take it as you will. It was the first uh, first real band was my latest ex. It was like um, we're talking like 2000 to 2003. Okay, yeah. so very early. Okay. Yeah, very early, and uh, it was like punk rock. It was almost like uh, Stink 182 and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shit, I can't even think of the bands that they listened to at the time. It was so fucking terrible. But it was like, um, <laughs> it, it's. I thought we were quite funny when we were doing shows. Like they were like making jokes and stuff, like little quips between songs and things like that. Yeah. Until I watched the live DVD of Blink-182 and it was pretty much just them repeating the jokes. So I was like, ah, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then there was, I was also getting like a bit big headed at the time, but I was, that band taught me to play a show with only having my kick drum in the monitors. It's like, they go like, <laughs> drummer, what do you want in your monitors? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I mean, it, it was fun. I mean, like we played a battle of the bands and we won it. Um, we had we had some good, good times. I mean, like some some of the my favorite memories of being in a band in the band scene came from those days because it was like I mean, who are we kidding? We're not anything big. If if we were compared to Lithium, we would be like I don't know, like uh, Beryllium or some shit. <laughs> it's just like not, it's like nothing worth counting, man. and and like each show was just a show and it was fun. We all had fun and we played with some rad people, like New World Inside and, and the Finkelsteins, if you remember them. And we played with uh, Tweak and like a whole bunch of bands. We even played Woodstock in Johannesburg. But like objectively, musically speaking, we were like we were not good. But uh, it was it was the it was some of the coolest memories that I have with playing in a band because like you come home thinking fuck we kicked ass you know it was awesome yeah, yeah. it was funny yeah. and that's that's the stuff you miss after after a certain period once you pass that that threshold of where yeah. people sort of sort of start to know you that's lost you'll never get it again that so, kind of thing uh, yeah. how did you get into the drums then uh, I was in high school. I think I was like in, yeah, you know, it was like 1995. I was in standard nine, grade 11 for the millennials. <laughs> um, we are old. Yeah, fucking off. <laughs> and um, there was there was a, a high school band that was comprised of uh, Lorne McGregor. You remember Lorne? No. He was the dude in my, okay, there was a guy called Lorne McGregor. He was in My Last Ex with me. Okay. And his brother, uh, James McGregor, Jimmy. And uh, they were auditioning for a bass player or something and i thought it was quite interesting because there were the only two guys in the school that actually played anything so like but they had um, the guitar amp there like on the stage in the hall behind the curtains you know and they're like they auditioning some people and then the and then jimmy's drum kit was sitting there it was a time of like swing star it was like a late 80s swing star so it was actually still a good kit okay and i'm checking this thing and then like they jamming and then in my head i'm just playing back in my head like lars Ulrich playing uh wherever i may roam from the <laughs> american music awards that they brought it that they broadcasted the M on Mnet. Yeah. So yeah. then, I, like, as I play, I sit back, grab the kit, and I'm like, da, 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 da. I'm just playing the beat, and I'm like, this is fucking easy. And then they like, look at me, it's like, shut up. It's like, sorry, sorry. And then I was like, cool, now I'm going to play drums now. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was it. Fucking ill. Yeah, unfortunately. It could have been like a good drum. <laughs> 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 okay, what's your favorite bands? F top top five bands, go for it. Dude, that's like impossible to answer. <laughs> okay, uh, top I'll... 10, go. Top 10, that's even Okay, more top 20, go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck sure this. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Next uh, hour will be uh, Art's favorite I... bands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll need to write a book about that shit. Um, no, dude, it's like, I don't know, the stuff, the bands that I dig or I listen to are pretty much like the only bands that sound like, like the way they play. If you know what I mean, yeah. Because like, yeah. if there's if there's a band that you can say, oh, they sound like this band, then I'm immediately disinterested. I'm like, mm. oh, skip. What else have you got? Because I, mm. I I just can't give a shit. Mm. So like, uh, bands that are always up there for me, um, like stalwarts, like ones that will always be in my what do they call the playlist these days? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah. Come on, you <laughs> that bad, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> In, in my, in my, what I'm always carrying around in my Walkman, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> my portable CD player. Ooh. <laughs> 
Um, no, it, it's like I always, I always have like faith them all in there. Um, pretty much anything that Mike Patton does is interesting and worth a listen, even if it's not good or if it's great. I think he, everything that he brings to the table is cool. Pick, also, because even also with the way that he approaches lyrics, like you'll pick lyrics because of the sound that it makes rather than its meaning. Mm. So you'll like. A sentence in a verse will totally like ruin everything else I've said before just because you know he, he put it in there because of the way it sounds. So he's got a really interesting outlook. So when I first caught that about Fat No More, it opened up like other stuff. It was like uh, Sigur Ross was also another band that um, that brings in like something that no one else can do. Like also like Björk as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a, a they're not so new anymore, but they're from. I think they're from fuck, I think they're from Finland. Uh, Cult of Luna. Okay, Kevin yeah. showed me his bag. They they are phenomenal. They they're great. That's probably one of the better heavy bands that has come out in like the last ten years. And I've listened to quite a few, and it's like yeah, fucking gives a shit. But <laughs> Cult of Luna is just really great. Uh, they came out a couple of months ago with a new release, and I've been spending that. That's pretty cool. Um, I also dig Fear Factory a lot. They're one of my favorite bands. Are they still around? Uh, I don't actually know. I, I think they are, but they're not doing anything. Um, I think it's mostly I think it's mostly legal shit that they've been going through because at one point there was two bands called Fear Factory. Oh. The same thing with was the same thing with uh, with uh, shit. What the hell is that band? Queen's where like the oh, vocalist oh, left the band, right, right, forgot it. And then the other guys were playing, so there's two Queen's going around, you know. So there was like two Fear Factories. So there was legal issues with who actually gets the name. I don't, I don't know, but. Uh, okay. There's, there's some stuff that's there, but uh, I know Dino, the guitar player, is still playing with Bougeria and a bunch of other stuff, so that's cool. But um, yeah, I always dig them. When they came to Cape Town, I was in my fucking element, dude. It was awesome. Um, and the, the five rad, worst. Uh, five worst. Fuck. Uh, immediately, <laughs> we should call this the top 100 worst ever. Yeah, immediately what comes to my head is Avenged, Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, really? That is, okay. That is the worst thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. They are that band. I, they, there isn't a band that pisses me off as much as Avenged Sevenfold does. Because it's the pure fucking goal that they have to think that they are badass while cribbing everything else and playing the weakest metalcore stuff that you've ever heard. <laughs> and for some reason, for some reason, they have a following. I'll never understand. That is <laughs> so Event Sevenfold takes the top two spots, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> they take the top uh, two spots, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's, it's there's a lot of metalcore bands. I mean, metalcore. Okay, the whole metal metalcore scene. Just put that as number three. <laughs> so I, need to, I need I need two others. I need two others. Nickelback's uh, got to oh, be um, somewhere. Nah, that's that's internet hate. That doesn't count. I mean, okay, like okay. they nickel nickel bag nickel back <laughs> nickel crack whatever the hell they're called. I mean, they, crack, they, yeah. They, yeah. They make they make bank, bro. I mean, like you check out concerts of them, and there's yeah. peop there's people there, and you find me a cool band that people say is cool that has more than 0.5 percent of a female audience in there. Mm -hmm. You find me one of those bands, Nickelback. They're fucking killing it. You don't have to like their music, but they're doing great, and they play "Sad but True" better than Metallica. <laughs> Like seriously, they go look for Nickelback, Sad But True. I am not looking life. on the internet for Nickelback of any sort. Well, go incognito. It won't pick up <laughs> in your YouTube profile. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know, dude. There's, 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 there's so many bands that, that I despise, but they don't come to mind more than Event Sevenfold and anything metalcore. Because it's like, metalcore is like, is, is like uh, the style of metal that's like the best of. You know, when you get like yeah. a best of collection of a mediocre band, that's yeah. metalcore. So you'll, <laughs> so you'll have like uh, auto-tuned uh, singing choruses, which all of them do it. There's going to be like at least three or four breakdowns in one song because, you know, nothing's heavier than not playing for a whole bar. <laughs> and then there's, there's this weird like arpeggio stuff that the guitar players do in the verses. And then there's like, they have to say, let's go or it will 
get down or get the fuck up or some shit like that. It, it's like you, you go to Builder's Warehouse, you go into like the plastic aisle, you get a book that says, write metalcore music. <laughs> And then you also get a free bag of duct tape because you kind of need the duct tape. <laughs> I hate the beat. And there's like a buddies of mine that have a, 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 a YouTube channel, like Papa G's house. Yeah. And everyone, everyone in there, they all into metalcore. So I'm always in the comments going, this is crap, play something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a troller. Huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's trolling if I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, because someone goes like, it's like that scene in uh, Monty Python he goes uh, I hear you you like to contradict people no I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that kind of thing <laughs> yeah but I, I don't know dude I mean like it, it, it's you kind of fuck, if I was actually to put like uh, two days thought into figuring out these are the worst bands other than Event Sevenfold I'll probably have no friends left <laughs> I mean, that's and not, I can't exactly. That's fair. And I can't exactly put. I can't put lithium on that list as well because I want to play in the band. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't in the band, would they be on that list? <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> nah, nah, no, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. That's nah, cool, nah, man. Nah. So you're just waiting for lockdown to end. Fuck knows when that'll be, so that you can get in and jam with the boys. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd really dig to jam with them i mean especially especially um if it does work out it'd be really nice to jam more regularly and to actually build a, a musical relationship with paul's bass again um i was just gonna say play again. A few times. yeah there we go i want you want to tell us all about that well <clears throat> with paul paul's a legend i mean you know i mean you're his brother yeah actually you might not know because you are his brother i don't know, <laughs> I actually know what the deal is there. <laughs> i'm not so sure <laughs> Apparently we are. No, Fuck, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, he's 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 ace. I dig playing with him. I mean, the first time I had a jam with him was was him and uh, fuck, what was his name? Now I'm really bad with names. Like when the when he was still in the print, Danny. I went to yeah yeah with Dan. That's right. I went to Sui Studios just yeah. to have a jam with them because like Paul mentioned having a jam like you know, saying something about the print and then just we just had like an hour or so we were just jamming it was just the three of us and that felt like really rad and then i was like fucking all like like something between my playing and paul's playing kind of like works quite nicely mm -hmm. and then and then especially hearing what he did black milk which is one of my favorite albums of all time just hearing stuff like that is just like fuck it always stuck in my mind and then when we did uh the faith the more tribute mm -hmm. he really worked hard to get that stuff down and we played really well there together again and then we did that uh kill city coalition right project that one song thing and i wanted him in there yeah i wanted him and in in there because I wanted to have, initially I wanted to have like this thing with myself and Kevin and then Ian and Paul. Right. And like that was the original idea that I pitched to Kill City when they asked me. It's like, oh, we can do this. Like like two fans of this band that they grew up with writing a song. But then Kevin couldn't do it, but Paul and Ian were still wanting to do it. So then it, it became his own beast. Right. That was probably my best, most favorite uh, recording experience and writing experience. So it's probably one of my favorite things I've ever done was That's that awesome. song. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really, I really do hold a high esteem for everyone that was involved in that because it was, it was taken seriously. It, everyone had their voice. I felt that I was being heard when bringing in ideas or and giving direction because then I ended up taking a director role. Right. So it was, I was almost, I was almost like on the line of a music can't write to the notes of music. Yeah. I got no music theory in my mind, but they, they enabled me to be able to do that. And then I felt like I enabled them to let cool experience. And oh, awesome. just to and to be in a creative space with Paul was really cool. So to start playing again with Lithium, especially since David started writing, um, started putting together his old ideas. What Paul said, like you know, he's got a whole bunch of songs that he wants to work on. Yeah. That just breaking those down and building them back up again with Paul, I think would be really cool. Because I think because we both are like you know, if if you can't play it live, you don't do it. You know, you keep it simpler and it has been now you're preaching. And that's just, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. So like him, Paul and myself, we have the same kind of outlook. You know, it's like if it 
if it grooves and it's got like that kind of a flow to it, then that's all you need for it to kick ass. And that's what he's done his whole life for me. Yeah. It's fucking kicked ass. Yeah, you know, so, he yeah. actually sent me a audio clip of a riff idea. Has he sent that to you yet? You, Dave? No, Paul. No, 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 not yet. Mm. Okay, because I, he sent it to me and he said, what do you think? And I was like, yeah. well, fucking, I, I can hear the drums already. I can hear art fucking ripping this apart. And I just said to him, <laughs> I said, I said, send it to fucking art, man. Let him fucking play over it and get a feel for it and send something back maybe and he's like oh i gotta check you know see you know stop being so protective send the fucking thing to him and let him fucking get an earful <laughs> how, are you, how are you gonna spark something if you don't send it to the oh that's gonna be you you know your rhythm partner you know well yeah no, i mean like of course but it's also like i'm not too familiar with their writing history and like how they have, they come across with the ideas and he's the one who's got the most predominant creative voice so well, that's I, probably why i think it's dave that. that has the most uh, the majority <coughs> of it um but paul is very much um mm. uh, he, paul doesn't like this whole um covid lockdown thing he likes to get into a room and to jam and to sweat it out and to figure shit out to, as a band otherwise you can't build that chemistry well if he did like the covid thing then we've got a problem here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I'd be I'd be keen to hear what like all the ideas are, but obviously the first thing would be like I mean get in that fucking room and play. Yeah, because there's there's like the whole thing of I mean you brought this up previously, I think it was uh, uh, Burkmeister or something. Burmeister. Yeah, Daryl. What's yeah. his name? Daryl Burmeister. Daryl, I think. Type seven, yeah. Yeah, you, I think you guys spoke about that where you're talking about uh, like um, the ease of producing music and writing and, mm. and drums and programming drums and all that stuff. It's like that there is, if you use that stuff properly as a tool, you can get a lot done. But it's it's not an instrument, you know. Like um, yeah. you, you can use you can use that stuff and you can write and collab from a distance, which has its place. You know, it's like say now and in the, like these days now, it'd be great if we were to do that. But it, I just I, I just I still think that there is worth waiting for the chance to get back into a room and just bashing it out and putting a tape deck in the corner and hitting record just to know what you've done. Yeah. Instead of having to utilize this this. It's amazing technology to create music because I think it's because it's so easy to do it it's become like the way to do it and I don't agree with that I agree what I do I agree with what I what I do agree with is that if you're a solo if you're a solo artist then use what you have available to you but if you've got a band and you have to program stuff then uh, I think you've got to reevaluate your priorities you know because mm -hmm. If you got a if you got a drummer, or if you have access to a drummer, then go for that because it will give it a little bit more authenticity. Even if it's playing through a B drum set, because no one can afford a studio. Like Kevin said, no one's got money to produce music anymore. Yeah. But somebody, someone knows someone with a V drum kit. You plug it into a computer, and at least, even though the sounds are samples, there's still the human element of someone playing those things. But to just sit there and program a fucking drum track, and then mm. having the dudes play over it, it's like, why don't you program the guitar track? You yeah. <laughs> But it's like, but it, it's like, uh, I, I, I really would want, I, I would prefer to work through stuff with lithium in a room because that's where you get the gel. You don't get the gel by sharing tracks and playing over because then you just, you just, you're just throwing ideas on a wall and seeing what sticks. But yeah, if there's no, if there's no chemistry or if there's no flow with the people who are actually going to play it, then you might as well program and just call it uh, the Dave Owens band or something. Yeah, no, no, it's, that's exactly right. I'm, I'm one for, I'm old school. I, I believe that should be a actual drummer, but I can understand people using machines to sort of maybe do demos and ideas and shit like that. But you know, let the, let the real hu human wobbly bit behind the kit do its fucking thing. Talking of kits, what are yeah. you playing at the moment? I had a Thomas Star Classic that I sold because it was the biggest pile of shit that I've ever played on. Um, and well, this is sad. This is a sad story. I was telling Carolyn the, about this yesterday. I was getting really upset. Fucking so, yes. When, <laughs> when I started, <laughs> when, when I started drumming, I got a Bird Costa drum kit from the internet, from Bird Costa in Pardon Island. But this time he was like above, upstairs from the cage in town. Right. You know, that awesome strip bar. And um, he had. Oh, he no, had I know it. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the stuff I've the stuff I've seen there. 
It was. <laughs> I've never seen anything there. And it was not rad. <laughs> Definitely not rad. Um, well, one it was supposed to be the cage, but there was a lack of cages there, and someone's <laughs> sunglasses disappeared. Oh, and for some reason, someone someone's beer glass was filled after a lap dance. So I'm not gonna, yeah. That just... <laughs> and free entry. I mean, yeah. you can't you can't go to a strip joint. There's free entry. It's like, what the hell are you thinking? Oh, that that is dodgy. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I yeah. I got this uh, low low quality entry super entry level birdcaster kit, and it was it wasn't actually that bad. It actually sounded pretty good. I even rented it out to a few people. Like remember Joe Day from Johannesburg? No. Like they she came down here to play, and she hired my kit. And the drummer was like, "Can I borrow your kit for a music video?" And this is my birdcaster kit because he just liked the way it sounded. It was a cheap ass piece of shit okay. and then like in 2000 and i think it was like 2001 or 2002 i bought a tama rockstar custom kit but it was like a fusion size so i had like a 20 inch kick drum and now i'm all about the 20 inch kick drums 20 inch kick drums on the shit okay. and i had that for for ages and ages and ages and then i i was like wanting to i wasn't really wanting to i mean i was earning some money at the time and then i walked into mars music and there was this this pdp platinum series maple shell kit that was going for like nine grand and i was like this is awesome so i bought it and this kit was unbelievable it was the best kit I've ever played in my life. You, you just breathe the drum head on and it sounded amazing. It was just like, doof. I took it to a gig. I was jamming with Sean Tim. He was in Battery Night and all those bands okay. and stuff. I was, and like, I was just setting up the drum kit and he's like filling with the bass because he's playing bass bass with us. It was Andy London, the Mission Man. Yeah. And then I just set up the tom and I just hit it and I, I just, I'm staring at it and he turns around and goes like, wow, that sounded cool. And I was like, this kit's amazing. And then, and then uh, a buddy of mine who's working at Butters, he goes, dude, I've got a Tama Star Classic here. Because I always wanted one, a Tom, like a proper Tama kit. Right. I'm like, oh yeah, how much? And it was like 15 grand. So I'm like, what? That's a fucking steal. Big red flag. So mm. it was like, so I sold that PDP kit to some guy in Durban. He won't get it back to me because I'm trying to buy it back from him. Oh, and then I got okay. this, I got this kit and it was a made in China Tama oh, Star Classic. Fuck. And I could not tune the thing for shit. It was impossible to tune. I spent thousands of rands on drum heads just to try and get it to sound good and never did. Ramon from Ill System, he came over to yeah. my place. We spent like four hours just trying to get a sound out of the kick drum. And then I, I just had it and I sold it to some dude who's using it as inventory for like renting out kits and stuff for like churches and things. So he just came over and says, give me 10 grand and take the thing. So like I lost five grand in that drum oh. kit and now I'm back to my old Rockstar kit and I, you know what I'm, I'm totally happy with my Rockstar kit because it sounded great I've loved it all these years but that PDP kit man it wasn't like a top of the line maple shell kit but that kit was fucking amazing and, the, and the, it's oh, like won't let it go no he won't let it go fucking mm, bastard bastard he knows something yeah. yeah he does I mean Jesus man that kit was and the only thing I didn't like about it was the finish it was like a silver burst and I hate burst I hate burst colors like when you see a fender with a sun burst yeah finish on it yeah it's like nah not interested i don't like it because like, from a distance it looks like you're playing a mandolin <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you if you um spray paint that that kit does it change the sound of it and all that sh sort of shit yeah it, it will change something i mean i i first hand in that because I took my Bird Costa drum kit, took my bass drum apart, I took the vinyl wrap off, and I turned it into a gong drum, you know, something that would yeah. sit next to me. Yeah. And ever since I fiddled with that thing, it, it just changed the sound. It was like, okay, let me try something else. So I painted the inside of the shell and it changed the sound. And it's like, so if you do anything to a drum that sounds good as it is, leave it. Leave it. Don't fucking right. touch it. Okay. So it's like, and Simon will be the first person to tell you as well, because Simon is the only guy in this entire universe who knows how to tune a drum kit, and that's not a that's not a bit of a lie. That guy, he knows, he's got an ear for it. Because mm. like every every lithium recording, the drum sounded great, and it's it, it's like, and this PDP kit was like touched by the hand of Simon from a distance, <laughs> so no one had to deal with it. Okay. You know. And and your ears, you say your ears are fucked. Is that just from years and years of playing? Yeah, pretty much. It, it, it's uh, tinnitus, or as the British yeah. call it, tinnitus. tinnitus yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There's an accent in there. Just say, yeah. There's a reason why there's an accent in the in words, and one has one. 
Tinnitus. Tinnitus. Yeah, yeah tinnitus. Night. Yeah. But, <laughs> Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I have that. I've had I've had tinnitus for about. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that for like about. Uh, it must have been about eight or nine years now, dude. Oh it's just, shit! The, the ringing, the ringing just doesn't go away. There's nothing, nothing that I can do. So like when when I when I said that like I stepped away from music to because I was just because of my ears and stuff. The one of the main reasons because I was getting worried because of my ears were getting like the ringing is one thing. The next thing is when it changes three different tones. Mm. While you're standing there, like watching TV, and then it just changes its tone, like out of nowhere. And then the other thing is when you come back from playing a show, and your ears are hurting, and, and not like, oh, my ears are hurting because it's ringing so much. Like it's, it's almost like someone has shoved something in my ear and left it there. Ow. So I was like, okay, there's something, there's something dodged. So I just stepped away. It seemed to have helped over the past couple of years of limiting myself. But so what do you do now at gigs well, and stuff? Do you do you waste shit in there to to? protect it i've got uh, custom made plugs that okay. i that i use um they they are molded so i went to this uh um ear person what is it what is the scientific yeah. name for it oh, i don't know what ear it. Ear, ear and something ologist or something okay um there's this there was a there was this uh, rad lady at, in uh, westlake who's got a ears institute there or something and she did the whole test you sit in like a quiet room with these headphones on and then you have to listen for these little notes in your right. left and right ear and then like pressure testing and all that stuff and uh they shove in some wax stuff in your ears and, and it sort of hardens they pull it out and they use that as the mold to create your plugs so that and then it goes to Pretoria and then it comes back like a week later and you try it on and then you need to give a bit of tweak you send it back so it was like about four weeks before I actually had, was able to use it but I've had that and um, when I'm when I'm playing shows especially with the dead beats what I do now is I got <clears throat> I got my headphones over my ears and I've got my earplugs inside as well so that like um, my headphones are playing the click track so I'm just right, hearing the tick, right. tick, tick. Yeah. the sound is coming through the PA so I've got my earplugs in I've got my headphones on top of that so my earplugs are protecting me from the click track and then and the audio outside and the headphones are protecting me from the audio outside so I'm like oh, doing like geez. double double layer protection every time I play I mean, so you, you're obviously, I, I mean, you're obviously worried that somewhere down the line, that's it. It's fucking, you won't be able to hear shit well, if, if you don't the, protect the, yourself the, properly. Yeah, exactly. Because when, when she did do the pressure testing, she, she did mention that she was surprised my eardrums haven't burst yet. Fucking Because um, she noticed that they are hyper flexible. So there's a lot of, there's like a, it's hard to say, but like your eardrum, you know, it, it bounces with the sound waves. But yeah. mine is like, it's, it's a very it's very responsive, so it, it flexes a lot. So there, there's a lot of airways that come in and out, which puts extra pressure on your on your eardrum and the ear canal and all that stuff. So she said, like, with that, I'm surprised you haven't burst your eardrums already Jeez. after playing for so long. So that's yeah. when I'm like, well, I don't want that to happen because yeah. apparently that's a pencil. Yeah, no. So yeah, no. Dude, so I, I don't yeah. know. Um, is it worth it? Mm, yeah. Well. I think now after this, after this uh, fucking co like Corona apocalypse that we're living through, <laughs> I, think, I think after it it will be. But uh, you can't you can't be a, a dumb twenty year old about it. You got to be smart, and uh, yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to protect myself as, as much as I can, even if some people see it, see it as excessive, like having earplugs and headphones on top when I can do it that way. Well, it's, oh, I don't, think, I, I don't think it's excessive. It's just the way you you got to protect your fucking ears and your you know future. Yeah. And also, I don't I don't really see myself playing like every weekend. And in the future, I don't think that's going to be a reality. I'm, like playing every weekend or once every month. It's like that's not really my aim or my goal. It's, it's just to just to play every now and again when it's a cool show to play. And I don't really care if there is a cover charge or not. It's, Towards the end of like when towards the end of this my run of actually playing shows like at War and Mercury and stuff, I was often saying just make it free entry, just get them in here, we'll cover the gig ourselves, who cares? Just get right. people in here. You know, it's like I don't I don't really I don't see I mean like you need a 
can charge cover, but people are so bloody pissy about it that they go like, oh, if I pay to get in here, then I don't have any beer money. I was like, go, go to a fucking clinic, you alcoholic. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's just, I'm like, I, I don't really care about the money. I haven't for a long time. I just want to have a cool show and I want it to be worth my while. So if I'm going to put some money in it, I better get some return out of it. So, and my return is fun. Yeah. Because I don't do, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I never will do drugs. I've only, I don't drink that much. I mean, I stopped smoking now because of, you know, because Zuma. So it's like you do know Zuma's not our president in, president anymore, right? No, but it's that Glavini. <laughs> yeah, I know. Of course, it's Zana Glavini. I know, I know. Whatever, yeah. She is making bank with all this illegal yeah. cigarette trade. I'm oh, yeah. telling you now. You think yeah, it's yeah. a? You think it's health reasons why they're stopping people buying alcohol no, and, they, and they cigarettes? They refill their nah. coffers. That's what they need to do. Yeah, they'll fucking refill their coffers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like yeah. I mean, like I don't do. I've never done anything that people would spend money on to have you know a good time. So. For me, it's like if I'm not having fun, then what else am I gonna do? Yeah. And uh, I was having fun when I started playing with my la- with my latest ex, and when I was like very fresh on the scene. It was the most fun stuff ever. I mean, like one point we decided to have a female singer, yeah. and um, <laughs> we shortly afterwards realized how bad of an idea that was. <laughs> so we st- <laughs> so we started playing shows elsewhere under different names, so she wouldn't know that we were playing. It's like we we played <laughs> we we played at the high school in Durbanville, but we begged the promoters not to put us on the bill because we didn't want to. <laughs> <us to go. laughs> so <laughs> so they were like, okay. So we played this thing. We still signed autographs and things like this in the trash. The kids picked up. They tried to steal my shoes. Like when I went to go get like a sip of Fanta from the one kid, they tried to steal my shoes. Like what the hell? Was awesome. <laughs> but no one knew who we were because we didn't introduce us. We had a gig where we we called ourselves the best band in the world ever, just so that we would throw off the scent. And like that was at the Troubadour in Cork Bay. Those days were awesome. It was like it doesn't matter how bad the music was. It just was having the fun. best time yeah. ever. Yeah, and nowadays I just want to have the fun. Again. I don't really care. And I mean, at, at least nowadays you you are able to play with people that actually know what they're doing. You just so got to get the people level. to come out and to support the gigs. That's it. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Why is it so fucking hard to get people out to a gig? Oh uh, well, I mean, like that, that's a, that's a big that's a big can to open there you know mm. uh, it's, what is it Netflix there's uh, wanking there's uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> there's lots of stuff dude I mean that's just what I prefer to do anyway <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder what you're going to be doing after this conversation uh, probably going to go back to work Ugh. oh god no don't start that <laughs> no but like um, I mean oh, you know you know, like one of, you know, one of the things was that people kept pushing back in the day it was like local is lacquer mm-hmm. it's not <laughs> nothing it's it's definitely not no what's lacquer lacquer is lacquer just because it's local doesn't mean it's lacquer it can still be absolute fucking shit and i don't have to give you money just because you're local yeah. fuck yourself <laughs> no, it's like I'm, I'm i'm not gonna go into a, i'm not gonna go into a, a cd store and buy a u2 album just because they're u2 it's like who gives a shit it's like if you're good, I'll come and check you out. You know, when when you're famous, you will come check you out. I do but not. Like, or if do you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, 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 dude, oh, I have to tell you this. When, when, did, remember when you two played in South Africa? Yes. It was the the pop art tour. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, I worked on that show as as the crew, and it was actually a fucking rad experience. The stage was massive. Yeah. It was absolutely massive. It was the biggest TV screen, basically, that, that there was. It was just these long, two-story long strips of LEDs that we just made this long screen. And we had to, they played, I think they only played one night. I can't remember if it was one or two nights. But yeah. we were backstage waiting for changeover. And oh, Just Jingles was the opening act as well. <laughs> I remember that. And then um, they they played and no one gave a shit, rightly so. But then it was like uh, nothing against them. I just don't care. And, but uh, 
Brent Harris is still a, is one of my favorite drummers. I'll just tell you that. Yeah, I stole a lot of shit from him as well. He's a fucking legend. <laughs> there's a trend but, uh, here, Art. There's a trend of you stealing yeah. people's techniques. Yeah, but Brent Harris, he's rad. He's rad. I've got a I've got a whole cool story with Brent Harris, and he won't remember it because you know he's got brains. But it's like um, <laughs> that. So we stay, we sit in behind the stage, and then the YouTube finishes their show, and we check in through the screen and stuff, and then they start leaving behind the back of the stage, okay? Right. But like one at a time. So it was the bass player. What what's his name? Uh, yeah, whatever. Bass McPlayer, yeah. son. Yeah. <laughs> Bassy McPlayer face. Like he yeah. walks past, and we we shouting. It's like about I don't know how many of us were there. Between probably, let's just let's just say fifty of us. Yeah. 50 hours crew wanting to having to take the shit down. So we grab Shatil for his attention. We get, ah, fuck it. And then he just walks past. He doesn't give a shit. He just walks past. And we're like, ah, oh, fuck. And then Larry Mullen Jr. is also a good drummer for, yeah. for what he does. He walks past and then we shout him, grabbing his attention. And he just looks and then like he just looks at us and he just like waves and continues like moving. So like, yeah, okay, fuck it. Yeah, cool. This is rad. And then the edge, yeah. weird man. But then the edge walks past and then like we're shouting, yeah. And remember there's also like a row of bodyguards for what? I don't know. There was no one else there. But anyway, so like <laughs> yeah. the edge moves past the bodyguard and then he's like starting to clap to us. He's like facing us. He's leaning over the, the railing and he's like clapping to us. And we're like, fucking yeah, like high fiving each other and all that shit. And then he walks off and then Bono comes past and we're trying to grab his attention. You know what he does? Go on. He fucking, he pushes the, the bounces away. He gets on his knees and he bows to us. And we are fucking going nuts. <laughs> and you're like high-fiving and stuff. He's like bowing and he gets up and he claps and blows a kiss to us. And then he's walking but the whole time. He's like waving back to us as he walks out of sight. Cool. So like people can chew Bono's a dick, but that was fucking cool. That was really cool. We were like losing Didn't our have shit. To do and then, like, that, but he did. He did. And Andy Mack was like, he came to us to like brief us. He goes like, that was fucking rad. He was like, that's so into it. That was, yeah. awesome. that was fucking rad. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, man. I came back from London in 2004. One, one of many bad mistakes was going to London. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, the New Year's party going 2004 into 2005. And um, it was in Langebaan. It was like a two-night festival that uh, was poorly unattended. Like from apparently from what the ticket sales were, they, I think they sold two and a half to three thousand tickets, but only 500 people showed up. Oh, fuck. So, so I'm kind of thinking... Well, we were kind of thinking that uh, they didn't actually sell the tickets. They were just saying that to keep the artists to play. Uh, and it was okay. like, uh, it was New Porn, which was uh, Arna Castings. Yeah. I've also got a couple of cool stories with him. Arna Castings, <laughs> New Porn Band. Um, it, was, it was Albert Frost was playing with him there. There was um, uh, Evolver was playing, Prime Circle, uh, Just Jingles. Yeah. Um, it was uh, shit. There was a whole lot of like you know th those kinds of bands. Yeah. So it was like two nights of, of this of this fucking shit, and then like uh, Barney Simon was also um, uh, MC. Yeah. So I'm like working at the back. I'm helping the stage manager, getting the stuff up and on, and coordinating and stuff. And then also helping Barney coordinate with him to get up and introduce all the stuff. So like we're like chatting in the back. And I didn't tell him that I was in the band because I'm like, you know what, this guy is probably walked down the street and someone wants to throw him a seat. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just chat to him like, um, yada yada whatever. So whole day. So we we're just chatting whatever whatever. And then the next day it was a night that uh, new porn was playing and just jingles was playing and just jingles was gonna do a, a, a sound check. So I'm like, fucking a. So I set up the kit just how Brent has it because I know what he, how he has his drum set. He has his higher pedal, uncomfortably close, and all that stuff. So I set up his drum kit, and then like he comes up, like just ginger, they come up and they do the sound check, and he sat behind the kit. And he didn't st didn't do anything. He was like, oh, it was cool. I was like, hey, nice to meet you, and I was chatting to him. And then he left his drumsticks behind. So I'm like, well, cool, I've got this fucking Brent Harris drumsticks. Woo he had signature <laughs> drumsticks. Right. So I had his sticks and then Barney Simon comes fucking running. He's going, you don't tell me you could play drums. That was fucking awesome. I'm like, what? That was the last <laughs> thing I wanted to tell you. <laughs> and he goes like, I'm going to get you to play tonight. And I'm like, I don't want it. But the, the whole night thing, like new porn and just change, you know, they were threatening not to play because of the poor turnout. Right. And then, the, and then Barney Simon was like having a fucking like a little tickle in the anus and he's like 
trying to organize something and then like on a cut like uh, uh, albert frost is gonna do his blues boost thing and all the drummers that he asked to play with him they were all pissed so then <laughs> barney simon came running back to me and he goes, dude, dude, go chat to albert he needs a drummer so i told albert i'm like dude i'll play for you and he goes who did you play with so i just go like uh played with hog and hog half price we all well, calvin decline russell king's cool you playing so like, <laughs> so like I'm there, there's me there's me sitting behind the set changing it up like setting up for myself and I've never heard Albert Frost music before in my life yeah. and like and I'm like shitting myself and the guys at the Golden Circle or at that time it was a whole fire higher they were doing the sound they were like hey you got this well like you know, give them give them horns whatever all the other drummers like from the Bolver and Finkelsteins whatever the fuck they were they all sitting on the side they're going like yeah dude you got to they're all pissed I play this, this stuff is fucking stick breaks <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm playing and this I play this part and then I'm like we've got half a stick and a full stick and then Albert Frost breaks a string and then he goes drum solo I'm like <laughs> 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 halfway through the song we didn't stop we just he just goes like drum solo and Skull, <laughs> from, Skull Cuba, the, the bass player he's like he's like he was pissed his, out of his brains but he was like just telling me he was like he's Guided me through the music like absolute champ. And then he goes like, yeah, just, he's just holding like the bass line. He's like nodding with me and while I'm doing the solo with one half broken stick. And then the other guys in the bands are trying to find a different stick for me. And so then we finish the song, so I point and they come and they give me a bunch of sticks. And then when we play the next four songs, I don't know what the fuck we played. Arthur's come off like Bonnie Simon again. And fucking like I tails me down the grass. Like, that was fucking awesome. That kind of thing. All the other guys. And I'm like, fucking Brent Harris, the stick broke on me. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. I mean, like, I only, I only got to meet him like in the sound check. But uh, yeah, it, it was, it was, yeah, he was okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's cool story. That's that's a cool story to end off the conversation, Art. We got we got to cut it there. I'm yeah, definitely. The time is up. No but, worries. Um, I'm looking forward to um, hearing what's going to happen with uh, the lithium fellas and what you guys come up with. And obviously, I'm still yet to see the you with the dead beats um from what i've heard so far um you're fucking rocking it man and uh so that's that's rad yeah yeah it's, it's rad it just means i just have to learn the stuff again it's been, like, it's been a long time since we've played anything Fuck. Yeah, but thanks man yeah looking forward to whatever happens Awesome, Art. Thanks very much for chatting to us, man. And I can't fucking even tag you in fucking Facebook anymore now. Uh, it's, it's, it's overrated. I can't even do Insta twat. I can't even good do Twitter. I mean, what the hell? It just I'll put it up on YouTube, and that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I'm sure you're, I'm, you're like you're I'm like sure a fucking you're an enigma within an, an, an enigma, bro. Yeah, I'm 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 like those what do you, what do you call them legends, <laughs> except the ops. <laughs> Except the opposite of a legend. Uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, you, your fucking drumming is exceptional and fucking hell. Future's looking good, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I was keen to see what happens next. Awesome, Arsh. Awesome. Thanks very much, man. No, thank you, dude. Alrighty, keep well, man. Cheers. Alrighty, ciao. Perfect harmony. You are wrong.